Welcome to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation Virtual CF Education Day. Fertility information for males with CF. A webcast supported through an unrestricted educational grant from Genentech. I'm Leslie Hazel, Director of Patient Resources at the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Joining me is Dr. Tom Walsh, Assistant Professor and Director of the Male Fertility Lab in the Department of Urology at the University of Washington. Joining Dr. Walsh is Dr. Moira Aiken, Professor of Medicine and the CF Adult Program Director, again from the University of Washington. We are discussing fertility information for males with CF. I want to thank everyone who submitted questions during registration that we will be answering. However, I wish to clarify that we will not be discussing questions related to cost or insurance coverage for infertility treatment due to the variations between states and insurance providers. I encourage you to work with your care center or primary care provider to explore this issue. Welcome, Tom and Moira. So let me start off. How does CF affect male fertility? Men with cystic fibrosis, or at least 95% of them, will have a concomitant condition called congenital absence of the vas deferens. Um, this ultimately leads to obstruction of the genital ducts that impedes the ability of sperm to exit the body. So what's that? That's good anatomical terminology, right. what's that mean? So, uh, importantly, sperm begin their, their life in the testicles or mm -hmm. the male gonads. Uh, eventually, sperm make their way into genital ducts that sit behind the testicles called the epididymis. And eventually, these series of tubules have a confluence in what's called the vas deferens. And the vas deferens is a, a long fibrous tubule that allows sperm to exit via the ejaculatory ducts. In men who have cystic fibrosis, the same genetic mutations that lead to the clinical sequelae of mm -hmm. cystic fibrosis lead to the absence of these ductal structures so that these men can have only a small portion of that epididymis, that confluence of tubules, and they typically lack all or a portion of the vas deferens. And as a result, sperm can never leave the testicle. So then, um, is a male with CF infertile, sterile, what's the What's the status? So I, you know, that that brings up the, the question of you know the difference between fertility and sterility, mm -hmm. which I think is a question that uh, I I try to avoid, and I think that is something from a bygone era. Um, sterility being sort of this this idea of there being a barrier to mm -hmm. conception, but I think in the modern era when we have so much technology available to us, I think infertility is really a spectrum disease, and so I like to think of this as a state of infertility that we can't overcome. So these men with cystic fibrosis or congenital absence of the vas deferens may have completely normal production of sperm mm -hmm. in the testicle, meaning they are producing germ cells. They are maturing those into sp normal sperm, which can then be removed surgically to foster pregnancy. So are, is it 100% every male with cystic fibrosis is infertile or sterile? Well, certainly nothing in medicine is 100% and nothing is 0%. Mm -hmm. What we understand about the, the data that we have is that greater than 95% of men who have clinical cystic fibrosis will have this same condition, congenital absence of the vas deferens. Now, what we do know is that probably 2 to 3% of men with cystic fibrosis go on to have natural pregnancies, mm -hmm. at-home pregnancies. C can I ask a question, Tom? Yeah. So can you determine if a man is going to be fertile naturally by a physical exam without yeah. a, um, a seminal sample. Absolutely. In fact, I think that's the first sort of, you know, if we were seeking a diagnosis, the very first thing that should happen is a referral to somebody like me or, or an expert in male reproductive urology. Um, and the diagnosis really is made by physical examination. The vas deferens is a very easily identified structure for somebody who's experienced. Um, and if there's any ambiguity, that ambiguity can be resolved by using non-invasive pictures like ultrasound or by doing a semen analysis, uh, which is looking at a man's ejaculate to determine the presence or absence of sperm and their, their count and motility. So um, a male with CF is infertile. Do they still need to, is there concern at all about birth control? Well, I would, because of that issue that we know that two to three percent of men, and these are based mm -hmm. on small studies, can conceive naturally. If I were a man with CF, I certainly would not take that as reassurance that I could not cause a pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think it's really appropriate for those men to use other forms of contraception until they are ready to family plan. 
I think it's also important to realize that even if they do have absence of their vas deferens and they do have no sperm in the ejaculate, mm -hmm. that certainly does not protect against any sexually transmitted diseases. So I think it's really important to, to maintain the, the same sort of barrier methods that we would recommend for all men engaging in, in sexual intercourse. So I, let me just throw this in as the nurse and the good preventative help. Let's cover it when we're here. What can males with CF do to help prevent sexually transmitted diseases? Well, again, I think it's the same general things that we would recommend for, for all men. I think condoms remain the standard for, for barrier protection against sexually transmitted diseases and having you know safe sexual practices. So let me go to a little bit different. And this question came in with mm -hmm. um, registration. Can males with CF have a fulfilling adult sex life? Uh, they absolutely can, without a doubt. Um, they're the presence or absence of the vas deferens mm -hmm. or these reproductive organs really have no direct connection to the organs of, of sexual intercourse. Uh, men can have absolutely normal, fulfilling sexual lives. What we know from large-scale studies is that erectile dysfunction or sexual dysfunction, these are diseases of aging. So I think it's, it's actually very exciting to know that with advances in the technology for caring for men with cystic fibrosis, that these men are now going to succumb probably to the same diseases that other men, you know, uh, approach in their fifth, sixth, and second, seventh decades of life. So, so, then, so are you saying that Moira is going to be dealing more with males with CF who have the, the ED, as the commercials call it, that you I, see on TV all the time? I think she will. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, you know, she'll send those patients to me and we can help them. Well, that's very good. I think that's very exciting. It um, been a, it's been a, it's a very rare uh, complaint in mm -hmm. the clinic. Uh, some patients who have been taking Maggie's have had um, issues with libido and only men that are very end stage occasionally have had mm -hmm. problems. But it's actually a, a very rare complaint in the uh, clinic. Oh, well, that's good to know. Um, one question came in, um, and you had mentioned the advancement of technology. Um, is there any um, surgical correction or replacement of the missing vas deferens is what's the what's the current right. technology from that perspective? So most men with cystic fibrosis, if they have congenital absence of the vas deferens, will have absence of a very large segment of the vas mm -hmm. deferens. So you can imagine if you have a, a, a large missing tube, that in order to bridge that gap becomes very complex. There are rare cases that I could imagine. And you have to remember, too, that this is a spectrum disorder, mm -hmm. so that the amount of these genital tubes that could be missing may vary from man to man. But there, I could imagine a scenario where all the stars are in alignment and you could actually sort of replumb the system. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that those scenarios, I think, are very, very rare, and I have yet to see one in my career. Uh, but I think importantly is to realize that these men, regardless of the ability to reconstruct their genital structures, can foster pregnancy. So. That goes into a question we, we got was, does uh, the 95, 98% of males with cystic fibrosis who are infertile, does this mean that their testicles don't function properly mm -hmm. and they can't produce sperm? Mm -hmm. Or is it um, they do produce sperm and it can, just needs to be collected somehow so they could biologically have a child? Right, so it's most certainly the latter of those categories that you mentioned. Most men with cystic fibrosis will have normal production of sperm within the testicle. Mm -hmm. uh, this is sperm that certainly can be removed through a, a minor surgical procedure uh, and can be used in conjunction with assisted reproductive technologies, specifically in vitro fertilization, with technology where we can take a single sperm and inject it into an egg mm -hmm. to foster a pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, and that's done routinely in fertility centers around the country and certainly here at the University of Washington. So um, a male with CF Moira comes to you, wants to uh, have children. What do you, wh where do you tell him? What advice do you give him? Who do you refer him to? Um, well, I uh, think it's wonderful when someone wants to uh, go ahead and become a father. And um, usually the issues that Tom has just so uh, eloquently discussed, we broach it at the CF clinic. Mm -hmm and then uh, refer the uh, individual to uh, Tom or a, a, another qualified urologist if, if in another center. If um, 
And then sometimes we broach, or often we broach at that time, um, the female aspect of in vitro fertilization and that it is, takes two mm -hmm. uh, people obviously to produce this baby and that the uh, partner has to go through um, uh, control of her cycle and receive um, a hormonal treatment to uh, stimulate her ovaries appropriately so that she doesn't make too many eggs before harvesting the eggs. So both partners have to have these minor surgical techniques mm -hmm. for this to succeed. So how successful are these different options um, for males with CF in um, fostering children? Well, I think there's two separate issues, which is one, how successful is it that a man with cystic fibrosis could produce normal sperm that could be retrieved from the testicles? Mm -hmm. Um, and then the second issue is, if sperm is retrieved, what are the chances that those sperm could be used to foster pregnancy? Um, to, the, to the first of those questions, can we get healthy sperm that can mm -hmm. be used? The answer is absolutely yes, and those chances are relatively high. It's certainly not a guarantee, mm -hmm. but in a large percentage of men with cystic fibrosis, we will be able to retrieve healthy sperm that can be used for uh, in vitro fertilization. Now, the couple, the, the issue related to pregnancy, that's really a, a couple-based question from my perspective. Mm -hmm. And what we know, one of the most important predictors of pregnancy rates has to do with a woman's age. And I think that's something that a couple, an individual couple, needs to seek mm -hmm. very specific counseling uh, with regard to what would their specific chances be of obtaining a pregnancy. So, so a couple goes through this consideration, but how does, we know that cystic fibrosis is needs to be passed on the gene is passed from both parents so we know the father has cf and so they're automatically going to pass one gene what does the um, mother or this to be mother um, have to consider what testing do they need to go through to try and limit or minimize or get rid of any risk of having a child with cystic fibrosis it's an excellent question leslie <coughs> um, so, Les is absolutely correct in that um, all uh, children of a cystic fibrosis man will be automatic carriers of the gene, but carriers of cystic fibrosis are very normal. And so really the question is not the patient, but their spouse or partner as to whether they are a carrier of the gene. Um, if they choose to have genetic um, testing, uh, in the United States, one has a 1 in 30 chance, their partner, of ca being a cystic fibrosis carrier. And so um, most couples, but not all, would choose to test the partner to see if they would um, carry the gene or not, mm -hmm. and then make their reproductive decision. Without uh, genetic testing, it's about a, uh, well, by the statistics I give, about a 1 in 60 chance that you would have a child with cystic fibrosis, 2% chance without any genetic testing. So um, uh, uh, the partner's tested, they are not a carrier. However, I have gotten these questions where then a child is born and their newborn screened positive and you know, what's basically I'm trying to figure out or, or uh, answer the question of what's the risk if the partner is genetically carrier tested as negative, is there still a risk that the child could have cystic fibrosis? Another, another excellent and complicated question, Leslie. It depends on which genetic testing was performed. If all the genes, the whole gene was looked for, then it is a uh, perfect test. We're going to the 100% perfect. But most labs don't test all the genes and therefore the small chance. So it's very important that the couple understands which lab uh, the, their blood was sent to to know what those probabilities were. Even in the poorest of labs, or the least number that are tested, I shouldn't say a poor lab, the least number that are tested, then it would uh, be down to about a 1 in 600 chance mm -hmm. or thereabouts. So very low chance if there is some form of genetic testing performed. So one more genetic question here. If um, the male with CF has mild disease, um, good lung function, good nutrition status, mild CF, um, and they have a ch he has a child with cystic fibrosis. What's the likelihood of his child having mild disease like he does? 
Well, that's another fabulous question, and one that I've asked, been asked several times in the clinic. Um, so one cannot predict by the father's physical state what the child will be like. And the reason for that is the child may or may not have the same cystic fibrosis genetic makeup as their father, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, one reason. And the other reason is that there are all these other modifier genes within an individual. So again, the child only has half the genes of the father. And so their clinical being may be uh, potentially better than the father or worse or the same. Mm -hmm. And so it's only fair to say that you would be, have, be the average cystic fibrosis person. Um, I would, I would okay. chime in with that, that that goes, holds true for the absence of the vas deferens mm -hmm. spectrum as well. And that even if you had somebody with a very mild pulmonary uh, status, they could have variations mm -hmm. in their absence or presence mm -hmm. of the vas deferens mm -hmm. too. So. so people with CF take a lot of medications. Do these medications impact male fertility? I'm going to have to defer that one to you. <laughs> In, in my clinical experience, I have uh -huh. not encountered uh, problems with spermatogenesis, sperm production, sperm maturation mm -hmm. among men taking medications specifically for their cystic fibrosis. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know if Moira can speak we, to that. We but think I, that's the case. So. Yes, I, I agree. Well, now a little well, bit different. Oh, well, I'm sorry, I, I was going to say that, the, the, that we are at a disadvantage, though, in that you have to remember that men, you know, the standard of identifying mm -hmm. infertility among men is to do a semen analysis, which is the most basic of tests, right. which cannot be done in Absolutely. men with cystic fibrosis. So we have a different baseline to measure these. We have to do a, take a small sample of the testicle, which isn't readily done, right. to know exactly how it might be impacting sperm production. So just, I, I put that but, out there. But in, in, but in non-cystic fibrosis men, the drugs that are usually mm -hmm. used to treat cystic fibrosis mm -hmm. shouldn't affect right. spermatogenesis. Right. Fair Absolutely. So now a little bit different, and this question came in, do transplant drugs, drugs taken post lung or kidney transplant mm -hmm. or liver transplant, do they, do any of those drugs affect male fertility? Yeah, that's, a, that's a great question, one that I actually get frequently. Um, most of the drugs do not, and again there is a spectrum of how they impact fertility. There are specific classes of drugs, these rapamycin type mm -hmm. inhibitors, of which I'm aware of two that there have been a number of reports now in the medical literature indicating that they do indeed seem to impair both the hormonal milieu mm -hmm. of, uh, of a man and the uh, sperm production, mm -hmm. but that this is a reversible uh, problem and that perhaps in working with their transplant physician and an infertility specialist, perhaps a regimen could be changed to, to remove those drugs. So one last question, um, what should men with CF consider health status wise or what it, fertility wise before having children? From my perspective, I think the most important thing for men with cystic fibrosis is to be forward thinking and to develop a plan. I think that men uh, and couples for that matter with cystic fibrosis, because fertility is a couple issue, mm -hmm. need to realize that they will not have an at home conception if the man has congenital absence of the vas deferens, meaning this is a pregnancy that will require technology. It will require uh, significant effort uh, and procedures and medications perhaps on both parts, mm -hmm. uh, both, both members of the couple, so that they need more time. You know, they need to plan a year in advance of what it will take to plan that, that family. So mm -hmm. from my perspective, it's all about a plan. So, and Moira, from your perspective as the adult, Physician taking the physician taking care of adults with CF. Uh, what considerations might there be? Um, I, I absolutely agree with Tom that one, uh, that like any parent, one should have a plan um, to not only conceive uh, and uh, have this child and, and raise this child, uh, but we've been very successful here in Seattle and have very many happy fathers. So it's very it's a very gratifying. Thing to do. Uh, you, you know, and the one thing that I would add too is that, you know, we mentioned that men do need to go through a minor surgical mm -hmm. procedure to obtain sperm. That's a, something that can be done either in the cycle of in vitro fertilization or it can potentially do be done in advance and that sperm and testicular tissue can be put in cryopreservation. Mm -hmm. But what I want to mention specifically is that there are 
very, it's very arduous for the female partner as well. So even though the disease is affecting the man, mm -hmm. when a woman goes through in vitro fertilization, she does have to be treated with hormonal drugs that can stimulate ovulation that do have certain risks associated with them. So I think that's the other thing that a couple really needs to take into account is that um, this is really something that, that both partners will, will be going through together. So they really need to talk to the fertility specialist Absolutely. about the Absolutely. process and, Absolutely. and what they need to take and care And somebody of. like me would work very closely in partnership mm -hmm. with Moira and with a female fertility specialist mm -hmm. to, to help couples through this. Well, thank you, um, Tom and Moira. I appreciate you joining me for this discussion. And we encourage you to have an open discussion with your CF doctor or primary health care provider related to fertility and cystic fibrosis. You can contact the CF Foundation and obtain either of these handouts, sexuality, fertility, and cystic fibrosis in adults or day-to-day -day thinking about having children. You can also find information related to male fertility on the National Institutes of Health's website medlineplus.gov or from the American Urological Association Foundation, urologyhelp.org. Remember, you can also hear uh, updates about CF, research, nutrition, lung health and lung disease, among many other topics on the archived webcast on the CF Foundation's website. I want to thank you for watching and submitting your questions, Dr. Thomas Walsh and Moira Aikens for answering the questions in our lively discussion, Rick Vest and the technical crew, Genentech, Melissa Chin, and the CF Foundation for making this webcast possible.